How do medical doctors feel about drug use? Dr. William Frosch has had the chance to observe thousands of young people who ran into problems connected with their use of drugs. He's associate medical director of Bellevue Hospital in the area of New York that serves the East Village. The East Village is one of the largest hippie neighborhoods of the city. I asked Dr. Frosch, why is there so much confusion and emotion surrounding the whole drug scene? People are very complex. We really don't understand how drugs change behavior. But the kids would say then, you know, we've been told all these lies about how dangerous drugs are and nobody really knows anyway, so what do you say to that? I think you have to say which drug. There's no question about the danger of amphetamine or barbiturates. We see deaths and psychoses resulting from these drugs. Uh, it's very clear about the danger of heroin. Thus far this year, there are nearly 300 heroin deaths in New York City. Uh, cocaine, when you get seriously involved with cocaine, is a physically debilitating drug. Alcohol has major medical side effects. The major hallucinogens, I think, also are in serious doubt. I think it's clear to me that LSD, for example, if taken at certain stages in the pregnancy, affects the developing baby in a way that is never good. Uh, there is controversy about the chromosomal damage, but I think there's enough evidence to suggest that it really is a phenomena, although it's difficult to be sure of the significance. Then I think there are certain kinds of people for whom any kind of intoxicants are dangerous. I've seen one boy who every time he smokes becomes paranoid in a, a really crazy way and gets involved in crazy, crazy situations which have been life-threatening where he's been in multiple automobile accidents as a result of, of the craziness that comes when he smokes pot. I think, though, that we don't know enough yet about marijuana. It's a very difficult drug to study even when you try to study it. Not terribly many people have tried to study it, partly because purified marijuana wasn't available, which made it very difficult to know quite what you were studying. Uh, I don't think anybody yet is sure about its safety, which is why at this point I certainly wouldn't recommend its legalization, even though I think the penalties for its use are obviously out of proportion to any possible danger. I think if I had to rate the drugs in terms of degree of danger, I think th my own bias is that probably the worst of the drugs are the amphetamines and barbiturates. I think anybody who takes enough amphetamines becomes crazy. Now, many of these people recover and they don't stay crazy, but being crazy is a very unpleasant experience, and I think it has a certain danger in it in that uh, if you're really zonked out crazy, number one, you may not turn out to be normal again. And of course, you may get involved in destructive kinds of activities while you're crazy, and I don't mean only suicide or harming yourself in that way, but for instance, if you're a student, you may screw up school so much that you can't achieve what you want to later. The kids I've talked to, a lot of them seem to feel that they get insight from drugs. Most of the so-called insights that seem to occur under the influence of drugs, either they can't be put into words in a way that makes them communicable to others, or if they are, they seem to be the sorts of things that one would think you could achieve without the drug. The other thing is that often these insights turn out to be crazy insights. Uh, experience also suggests that they seem not to last and aren't converted into a change in the way one lives one's life. Now, for instance, when one talks about religious inspiration, it's not just understanding something, but it's the ability to utilize the understanding and convert it into a difference in the way you actually behave. And that doesn't seem to occur usually in relation to drug-induced insight. Now, a lot of kids have told me that they think speed really does help them do better in school. Have you, do you, have you dealt with that at all? Uh, the use of intoxicants reinforces a kind of magical view of the world. If I wish for something, it will happen. 
Now, for example, if the task that you're facing is to pass the examination tomorrow, it's much more useful to study tonight than to turn on tonight. Uh, there's a famous story that was printed in the New York Times of a boy in college who went in and wrote what he thought was the best examination he had ever written. And it turned out he had written page after page, but all on a single line, rewriting over and over the words that he had previously written so the entire examination was illegible. And I think this is not an untypical kind of thing that, that happens with speed. That is, you feel you're doing well, you feel great insights, but it turns out to be not as organized, not as structured, and overall not as good a performance as you would do without the drug.